Hey guys, Jen from Bent Yoga, and today we are going to talk about um, this concept that yoga is about more than the postures. Now, if you're new to yoga and you've ever heard anybody say yoga changed my life or yoga saved me, you might think they're a little crazy because how can a lunge change your life, right? Here's the thing. The postures are one tiny little piece of yoga. One tiny, tiny little piece of yoga, okay? The bigger picture is that yoga is this journey towards enlightenment or um, bliss or non-reactivity if you don't want the fancy unicorn and bunny rabbit types of words, okay? So many, many, many years ago, with, when yoga first started, then there was this man who he started noticing a series of similarities along this path to enlightenment. So he wrote a book called The Yoga Sutras. And what The Yoga Sutras is, is it outlines how to get to this path of enlightenment. It outlines this path. It's kind of a, a how-to book, how to get to enlightenment, right? So his name is Pantanjali, and he is often considered the father of yoga because he's the one who put these steps. He called them the eight limbs of yoga. In reality, they're, they're a path. They are, you have to finish this one before this one, this one before this one. And I guess I shouldn't have said that. You don't actually finish a step, but you bring awareness and you practice a step before you move on to the next, before you move on to the next. And if you can continue to do that, they build on each other. And then the final step, the eighth step, is this enlightenment. Okay? So we're going to get into what these eight steps are. I'm going to try to do it pretty briefly, and maybe you can start to understand what yoga truly is, what this path entails, because I'm going to tell you right now, asana or posture, it's the third step. It's not even the first step of this enlightenment journey. So if you're looking to de-stress, to come to this place where you're no longer reacting to the world around you, there's a lot more to it than just doing some postures on your mat. So the very first one is called the yamas. Now what the yamas are is they are kind of laws or rules for how you interact with the world around you. So they're kind of how do you interact in your relationships, how do you interact with society. Um, there are things such as nonviolence, truthfulness. Um, we're going to get into those just a little bit later in each video. I'm going to do a couple more videos that focus on the yamas and the niyamas, which is the next step. But for right now, it's just yamas are how do you interact with the world around you? And then the niyamas are how do you interact with yourself? So the step two, or the second kind of piece of awareness that you need on this journey is how do you interact with yourself? What do you put into your body? How pure are you? Cleanliness. There's a whole bunch of things. And like I said, we're going to get into those individually in other videos. But before you ever get to the postures and the asanas, which is step three, you have to go through these yamas and these niyamas. Because here's why. If you come to your mat with absolutely no awareness on how you treat yourself, with absolutely no discipline on how you treat the other people in your life or the rest of this world, then the postures are basically aerobics. They're not teaching you anything. The yamas and the niyamas, they bring to the forefront our jealousy. They bring to the forefront our competitiveness. They bring into the awareness of the ego. So we have to kind of master all of that stuff, work towards it at very least, before we can bring ourselves truly onto our mats to practice yoga. Because these postures, if we're just doing it because we want to put a pretty picture on Instagram, that's not yoga, that's aerobics, or that's stretching. What yoga is, is using the postures to challenge yourself. Using the postures to um, learn about yourself. To just be in that posture without judgment, without competition, without ego at all. But if you haven't done any of that work on yourself first, how can you expect it to show up on your mat? You can't. You can't. So the first step is the yamas, how you interact, the disciplines you have when you interact with society and the outside world. The niyamas are how do you interact with yourself, how do you talk to yourself, how do you treat yourself. The third one is the asanas.
asana, the postures themselves. So those are the first three steps in this yoga journey. You're preparing yourself by bringing this awareness and then you're moving your body. So the next step is the pranayama. Now pranayama, it just, it's simple. It translates to breath control. The breath is the one piece, the one system I should say in our body that kind of floats between the unconscious or subconscious mind and the conscious mind. So when we want to start getting deep into ourselves, that breath is such a good tool because we can control it and it can communicate with these other subconscious or unconscious pieces of us that we don't have, we can't usually tap into. That's why the breath is so important. It's kind of the go-between, it's that messenger. So we put ourselves in these postures, step three, and while we're working on step four, pranayama, breath control, we're challenging our body so that our breath becomes, it kind of gets put on the back burner, I should say. So when you're shaking and you're doing a lunge and it's shaking and it's so uncomfortable, we stop thinking about our breath. So the step four is, while you're in that state of uncomfortable, can you still control your breath? Can you still breathe deep? Can you still breathe slow? Can you stop the hyperventilation or the breathing through the mouth? <sighs> when you get uncomfortable, can you choose to breathe softly? That's such an important part to this path to enlightenment, to be able to stay in control when the body is just screaming at you, when the situation is intense, to be able to relax, to breathe. So we've got our yamas, how we interact with the outside world. We've got our niyamas, how we interact with ourselves. We come to our mat, ego-free, judgment-free, very aware, and then we control our breath while we're there. Those are the first four steps to enlightenment. So the next step is pratyahara. And sometimes it's, um, it's defined as, uh, how do they say it, withdrawal of senses. I don't really like that definition. So instead, what it is, is it's kind of absorbed. You're absorbed in your senses. And what I mean by that is that, so you're in this posture and you're controlling your breath. Now what happens if somebody knocks over a heater right next to you? Do you jump? Pratyahara is that you are no longer affected by those outside senses. Sound, smell, sight. That you're able to stay in that posture and stay soft no matter what's happening around you. So that's step five, that, that where the senses, you're kind of absorbed. Everything that is coming in is just absorbed into you instead of you reacting to it. So then you're in these postures, you're breathing. Nothing outside can shake you anymore. And then you've got this, this next step, which is focused concentration, dharana. What focused concentration is, is that you pick something, maybe it's a mantra, maybe it's a sensation in your body, maybe it's your breath, and you put everything you have into that. And that controls your entire attention. So you're no longer looking around, you're no longer hearing things, and then you start to even zero it in even more to that focused concentration. Now sometimes when we're doing that, that's when we think we're meditating. And you know how the easiest way that you can tell that you are not meditating? When you think, look, I'm meditating. Because if you're still having those thoughts, you're leaving that focused concentration. So that focused concentration has to be there. And then that next step, that dhyana, that's your meditation. And what that is, is that you're, you're again, you're just absorbed in it. You have no thoughts. Look, I'm meditating. It's a place a teacher can guide you through the asana. 
can guide you through the pranayama, the breath control. They can even guide you to focus on something. But this dhyana, this, one, this one's all you. It just is something that happens rather than something you can make happen. So once you're focused, once all of the, everything is lined up, then you're in this meditative state. Once you're in this meditative state, that's when the last step comes in, the samadhi, which is the bliss or the enlightenment. But you have to go through all these other things. You can't just be like, yeah, I'm going to take some bliss right now. You got to go through all these other steps in order to get to that point. So you've got your yamas, how you interact. You've got your niyamas, how you feel about yourself. You've got your asana, the postures, and then the pranayama, the breath control. Then you start to detach yourself from your senses so they don't shake you anymore. You begin to focus, 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 focus on one thing. And then poof, you're in that meditative state. And that's where the bliss comes in. Now, I do have some bad news for you. The bliss and the enlightenment, not what you think it is. It is not all of a sudden you start floating. No, it's not. It's non-reactivity. So we can put it in very simple terms that this bliss or this enlightenment, you no longer are affected by the outside world. That's, that's what it is. So it's not that you're going to be eternally happy or sad or any, it's not anything like that. What this enlightenment is, is that you now have the ability to choose your thoughts. That it doesn't matter if you just lost your job. It doesn't matter if somebody walked out on you. It doesn't matter if you're getting married. Whatever it is that's around you, happy, sad, frustrating, angry, joyous, whatever it is, that's no longer what defines your mood your thoughts. This enlightenment or this bliss, you get to choose it at this point. You become so self-aware, you detach from everything around you, that's when you get to choose this. Now, you might see cartoons that have, you know, hippies always portrayed as these smiley, you know, go lucky type of people. And that's why, is because they're only sad if they choose to be. And they're only mad if they choose to be. And somebody cutting them off in traffic no longer affects somebody who has found this enlightenment. But it's fleeting. That's the thing. It's a constant journey. Now, it gets easier and easier to get through each of these steps. But it's not like you hit enlightenment and then, bam, you're enlightened forever. Uh -uh. If you stop practicing the asana, stop practicing the asana and you stop practicing the pranayama, the enlightenment's gone. It truly is. This is something that you have to continue and continue and continue to build. And when you do feel it, maybe it's for a split second. And the next time, maybe it's for 30 seconds. Where you're so aware, you're so here, that you don't have to respond or react to anything thrown at you. So this whole concept of yoga Postures are one piece of it. The big picture is it's a guide to get you to this place where you can choose to be happy. And no matter where you are on the path, and every day that changes, every day that changes, it doesn't matter where you are on the path, this yoga is meant to guide you. There is no domination of yoga. There is no, I got it, I'm good at it, nothing like that. So if you've been thinking of trying yoga or you have tried yoga and you kind of gave up because you're like, I'm not good at it. You're not good at one piece. And that's not even the case. The asana is simply there to challenge you. It's not there for you to win. It's not there for you to conquer. In fact, you can't. Every single yoga posture has no end. You can always go deeper and you can always back off depending on your situations of that day. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more background. We are going to dive into more um, of the yamas and the niyamas and what those disciplines are. But if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot.